Did you know that inflammation could be the root cause of your hormone imbalance, which is causing so many issues in women's health today? I'm Dr. Patricia Mills, holistic medical doctor, providing natural root cause solutions to your health concerns, and welcome to the Wild Wisdom Show. Today, we're going to be talking about the hidden link between inflammation and hormones and why this could be a real reason for you having your hormone imbalance and how does it happen. So inflammation is actually a hidden hormone disruptor, and many women and men are walking around with low-grade inflammation, which is causing this hormone issue. So there are different kinds of inflammation. Now, the acute inflammation is that good kind of inflammation that you want if you have a cut in your skin or an infection in your body, and you want your immune system to get activated to cause a local inflammation that allows that immune system to concentrate in that area. And for a short period of time, you'll have redness, swelling, pain, and that cut will get cleaned up and the infection will be resolved and the tissues will heal. And then that inflammation goes away. And that's the kind of inflammation that we want. But if we are unknowingly introducing things into our body, for example, through our drinks, through our foods, through our cosmetics, through our house cleaning products and unknown exposures to environmental toxins, that will cause multiple of internal cuts, so to speak, not real cuts, but internal damage. And that activates the immune system. The immune system goes to those areas and it could be in the gut, could be in the muscles, in the brain, in the ovaries, the testes, the liver, in the joints, and it goes to try to resolve the problem. But if we don't stop what's causing that inflammation in the first place, over time, the body starts to experience chronic inflammation and you get internal problems, including impacts on your hormone health and hormone balance. And so chronic inflammation really harms more than you think. It can cause issues with the heart, causing problems with heart disease and strokes, with the brain, causing everything from brain fog, low mood, irritability, all the way through to dementia and Alzheimer's. It can really mess up your blood sugar control and result in things like diabetes and problems with your metabolism, including hypertension and being overweight. And it can really disrupt your hormones. Now, hormone imbalance and inflammation have been linked to various hormonal conditions, including polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, endometriosis, fibroids, irregular periods, problems with periods like heavy bleeding, pain with menstruation, all the way through to infertility issues and problems with perimenopause and menopause, causing that transition to be worse with worse hot flashes and night sweats, worse problems with mood swings, irritability, depression, and anxiousness, worsening of problems with cognition leading to issues with dementia and again, Alzheimer's, problems with osteopenia and osteoporosis, muscle loss, sexual health issues. And so we really need to understand how it is that inflammation disrupt hormones and how hormones impact inflammation so that we can start to address the root causes and prevent or reverse these problems from happening. Now, hormones that inflammation disrupts includes hormones like testosterone, both in men and women, estrogen, progesterone, the thyroid hormone, insulin, the cortisol, which is the stress hormone, and more. So for example, testosterone is a hormone that in both men and women regulate healthy muscle mass and healthy libido when it's in good quantities. Now, testosterone in good quantities reduces inflammation, but when inflammation is present, it can reduce testosterone. So it can become a vicious cycle where more inflammation causes less testosterone, which causes more inflammation. Now, the conversation about estrogen and inflammation is a bit more complicated because estrogen can act either as an anti-inflammatory or as a pro-inflammatory hormone. And again, if inflammation is present, it will really mess up estrogen levels and also start to impact how estrogen is broken down and how much of the toxic estrogen breakdown products are available to, again, worsen inflammation. Now, when you dive into the literature on estrogen inflammation, whether estrogen works to reduce inflammation or worsen inflammation depends on various factors, including, for example, what causes inflammation. When the inflammation is caused by bacteria or viruses versus an autoimmune flare-up 
that can change things. If it's a chronic disease situation or chronic autoimmune condition situation, estrogen can be inflammatory if it is given at the wrong dose and at the wrong time in a woman's life cycle, but it can also be anti-inflammatory if given at the right dose and at the right time of a woman's reproductive life cycle. It can also depend on the organ that the estrogen is working on. There are different estrogen receptors like alpha and beta receptors, and that can change the local inflammatory or anti-inflammatory effects of estrogen and more. So it can be very tricky to understand how estrogen may be causing inflammation or improving it, and what could be the effects on inflammation if you're using hormone therapy. And I'll be doing a deeper dive on this very important topic, because I think many women are not understanding that if you add hormone therapy to a body that's very inflamed, it could either help or it could really worsen the inflammation that's existent. So we need to understand that much, much better before we start trying to understand why do some people respond well to hormone therapy and some people do not. It could be that inflammatory component. Progesterone, which is also used in hormone replacement therapy and also produced by our body endogenously, is a natural anti-inflammatory. It helps calm immune re- But when the body is inflamed, our receptors for progesterone on the tissues go down, which means that the progesterone may be present, but it can't get into the tissues that need the action of progesterone. So you may have abundance of progesterone in the blood, but a deficiency of progesterone in the tissues. And that could also potentially happen in somebody who's taking progesterone therapy, has a lot of inflammation, that therapy may actually not work well, maybe it might even make them feel worse. So that could explain why some women trialing things like progesterone therapy may actually experience worsening in their symptoms over the short term. Now, thyroid and inflammation is very interesting because it's a two-way street. Thyroid hormones help control inflammation, but again, inflammation will will harm the thyroid and cause it to not produce thyroid hormones appropriately. So one of the root causes of thyroid issues is inflammation. For specific health conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, it has been shown that chronic inflammation really disrupts the insulin hormone effects and insulin hormone, which is kind of like a glucose hormone. It does many things, but one of the things it does is regulate glucose uptake from the blood into the tissues. And so when women have PCOS, it has been shown that they have problems with that insulin hormone action and inflammation disrupts insulin hormone action. So there is a link there and inflammation will also affect ovulation, which is a problem in terms of infertility, both in people with PCOS and also people without it, but having issues with infertility. Endometriosis is also an inflammatory disease because it's really has estrogen as one of the root causes and estrogen imbalance and estrogen can fuel endometriosis and inflammation can worsen it. So again, it's not that estrogen is bad, but that certain conditions can arise in the body, typically due to a combination of our diet, what we eat and what we drink, how we stress, toxins, how we sleep, how we exercise or we don't exercise. And that interacting with our genetics can cause us to develop certain specific situations like endometriosis. But then if you have inflammation on top of that, it'll worsen the condition. It turns up the dial, the volume of the problem, so to speak. So when you can reduce inflammation, you can also reduce the signs and symptoms of conditions like endometriosis and fibroids. Fibroids is a very common condition in women, and it can be non-problematic or it can be very problematic, becoming very large, impinging on different structures, and also causing problems with menstruation, lots of pain, heavy bleeding, and impacting infertility. And what we do know is that the more inflammation we have, the heavier, the more painful the periods associated with these fibroids. So again, lowering inflammation can be such a powerful tool in order to reduce the signs and symptoms of these conditions. As mentioned, menstruation and menopause symptoms can be worsened with inflammation. So if we can improve inflammation during any life stage of a woman, and young girls, by the way, but here we're focusing more on those reproductive and post-reproductive stages, 
we can certainly see improvements in all symptoms associated with hormone imbalances during those phases. And the good news is that you can reduce inflammation and it all has to do with lifestyle and supporting the body's ability to regulate the immune system, to get rid of what's causing the inflammation in the first place that might be supporting systems of detoxification, that might be identifying hidden infections, supporting gut health because 70% of the immune system actually lives in the gut, in the lining of the gut, and also eating whole foods, moving your body, lowering your stress, and getting good sleep. These are all foundational things. And hormone balance really starts with fighting inflammation. And if you don't know where to start, that really want, if you don't know exactly where to start when it comes to that, it's really about addressing gut health and through the gut health, impacting the immune system. Because as I said, and it bears repeating again, 70% of the immune system is in the gut. So if we can work on our gut health, starting with you know, looking at eating an anti-inflammatory diet and using supplements if needed to support gut health and lowering inflammation, it can be an extremely useful strategy to start with. And then continuing to explore resources. If you want to do this, if you want to start reducing inflammation now, check out my channel, my YouTube channel at dr.patriciamills for my playlists, including my inflammation playlist, my gut health playlist, my hormone health playlist, and start reading, start listening, start absorbing this information and putting it into action because wisdom is knowledge and action. If all you do is acquire information without taking action, you're never going to get results. And one thing I would recommend is starting with the anti-inflammatory diet, the video that I created. You'll be surprised at the information there. I've had nutritionists watch that video or listen to that video and tell me that they had never heard of it before and that they were fascinated by the research and the science behind it. So again, check out the writing below this video or the links. I hope you get much enjoyment and information out of it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the best way to support the Wild Wisdom Show. Save and share. Sharing is caring and you never know when someone might benefit from this wild wisdom. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day, evening or night. Bye now.